Catholics, you're Baptists, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Catholic, whatever denomination, pastors and ministers all experiences the same type of troubles. And in this text we find Galatians chapter 6 and in verse 7, it, it talks about the sowing and the reaping. And in this particular verse, in verse number 9, is still trading or trending on the agricultural imagery of seed time and harvest. See, Paul has admonished his readers to preserve or persevere in the faith. Yes. Yes. Knowing that at the proper time, yes. God will fulfill the promises and bring to pass the consummation of all the things in accordance with his good pleasure and with his divine will. He was telling them, if you just wait, That's it. That's it. you can just hold out your heart it's going to come. Now you see throughout Galatians 5 and, and 6, Paul had instructed the believers in Galatia to do a number of specific things. Yes, yes, yes. He told them to expel the agitators. Mm. So you only thought haters was in our days. Come on. To love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. To keep in step with the Spirit by manifesting the fruit of the Spirit in your lives. Yeah. To practice church discipline by restoring those who have fallen. Yeah. To bear one another's burdens. Yeah, right. To examine yourself in light of the judgment seat of Christ. Come on, come on. And to provide material support for those who instruct you in the faith. Right, right. That, 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 that's what Paul talked about. That, that's what he admonished him about. But I'm just going to talk to you a little bit, ministers and pastors, and just kind of throw in there, uh, you know, about the making the hospital visits. Providing the counseling for the saints who don't always listen. That's true. Amen. Feeding people. Giving financial support to people and spending time with others more than you do your family. Mm. These are just some of the things that, that, that we go through. Some of the things that, that, that we do. And, and Paul sums it up this way and puts it under the general rubric of doing good. That, that, that's what we do. We, we, we're doing good. And doing good is, is in the sense of fulfilling the law of Christ, being a good pastor. So why did Paul feel it necessary to persist in reminding those in Galatia to practice those plain duties, those, those everyday things that we should do as believers. Sometimes we, we just have to be reminded of what we have to do. We can forget what we have to do. And so what Paul does is he puts it all under doing good. trying to get them to understand is don't quit. Don't quit. Thank you, God. Don't quit. I know if you real be real honest with me, you know, you, you done felt like quitting. Come on, pastors. 
Come on, minister. You, you, you may have felt like giving up. When you looked out in the audience and there was empty seats. And Come on, preacher. Oh, preach it, preach it. When the treasurer gave you the report on the tithes and the offering. Yes. When they started fighting in the kitchen. Say that. See, you thought they just created the deacons. They just came up with it. They had to create the deacons because of the food. Say it. But, 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 there are times when you just feel like giving up. In Galatia, they, they were faced with the tension of the temptation of the legal on one side and the liberal on the other side. Folks, want to exercise their freedom a little too much. And then there was some that, that wanted to be real strict about the law. So, so, so Paul had to remind them not to lose heart. Because any time you, you, you have those types of things going on within the congregation and the tension is created, uh, it can bring about uh, uh, something between those that are there that makes them want to feel like giving up. But Paul told them, don't give up. Some had begun well in their life, this new spiritual walk. And they were in danger of losing their first love. They've been diverted from the witness and service into petty bickering and greedy self-concern. To those fatigued and spiritually exhausted believers, Paul made this appeal. Let us not become weary in doing good. But in the last part, Verse number nine, Paul added a word of motivation to this urgent reminder. All right. All right. What he told them is, for at the proper time, yeah. 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 Right. we will reap a harvest yeah. Yeah. if we faint not. Yeah. If we just don't quit. If you can just hang in there, you're going to reap a harvest. Mm. Mm. See, the word proper time. In the Greek is kairos. That's the same word Paul also used in Galatians 4 and 4 to describe the opportune moment, that fullness of time in which God sent his son into the world. Yes. See, timing is everything. Yes. We have to be able to exercise patience and be able to wait on God's timing. But see, it's at this point in time where Paul's metaphor of the spiritual life and process of sowing and reaping kind of really actually breaks down. See, when a farmer would plant a crop and in the springtime, he could kind of calculate with reasonable accuracy, the time of the harvest. And of course, there are going to be certain variables that 
that you have to take into consideration. Matters such as the changing weather patterns and a swarm of destructive insects and things like that. You, you, you have to consider that, but they could still kind of tell you exactly when it was going to be a harvest. And if that didn't work, they could go to the farmer's almanac. They could go to even more scientific agricultural techniques. See, the wise farmer can usually depend on the expected timetables of seed time and harvest. But not so in the spiritual life. See, one of the greatest frustrations in the ministry and the principal cause for weariness in well-doing is the inability to calculate the spiritual outcome of faithful labors in the work of the Lord. Sometimes, you know, you just want to know. You know, us good Hebrew Pentecostals, we, Lord, just show me a sign. Let, let me see something coming out the ground. Let, let a few folks come to church this week. Can we get a visitor or two? I'm preaching hard. I'm, I'm doing all that I can do, but I don't see anything. Yes, God. Don't even look like nothing is on the horizon. I've been at this for a while. Still nothing. And so, for this reason, we must be cautious and putting too much stock in what we often call visible results. Yes. We're looking for something. But in the spiritual life, being a pastor, being a minister, oftentimes you don't see nothing. You have to have faith. You got to know that you actually did put something in the ground. You actually did so something. And because I trust God's timing, I know that one day something is going to happen. We serve a sovereign God who has promised that his word will not return void. And the ultimate harvest is assured. But it will only come in the proper time. At the right time. In God's own good time. So pastors and ministers, I know that you've been waiting on God to bless you. And it might not have happened for you yet. Great, sir. But I'm here to tell you today, if you quit now, You'll never see it happen. Don't forfeit all the time. Effort and energy that you've invested in your church and your ministry. Also remember that there's other folks that have invested in you
anytime need. So, so you know, we, we always talk about in due season we're going to reap if we think not. Thinking about the time when Jesus comes back. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse 58, I, I'm just going to tell this to you. My brother and sister, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Your labor, your labor, your labor is not in vain. Keep working, keep grinding, keep doing the work of the Lord. Don't quit. Thank <laughs> you.